Well, welcome to The Long Road. My, my name is Chris Roberts, your host. I'm back after about a four week trip around the country, a little bit browner, about 15 pounds lighter. Um, it was a real enjoyable trip. I'm sometimes wondering if the trip was um, too short. Um, it was great, 29 days, no TV, no newspapers, no emails. I got back and I found out I had about 6,000, a little bit more than 6,000 emails. And it, it just didn't dawn on me that 6,000 emails in less than 30 days. So you're talking about 200 emails a day. Boy, talk about someone stealing your time. The, um, I know when I was talking to people prior to going out and saying, hey, I'm going to try this trip and uh, I'm going to sleep in my car, I'm going to try to do as much as possible. You get those funny looks on their face and saying, wow, you know, that's pretty stupid, that's pretty dumb, why would you want to um, sleep in your car? One of the things I've told people, why would I want to spend 80 to to $100 a night sleeping in a hotel or a motel? You go to a motel, you want to get there early, you want to leave late. You just don't want to um, waste your money. And um, then when I told people that, yep, I plan on going at least 10,000 miles in 30 days, and I planned on doing it less than $3,000. Again, you'd see that funny look on their face. I remember my brother, his wife, and his three um, sons, they went to Disney World a few years ago. They spent less than five days at Disney World and spent more than... Um, $3,000. I know I have other relatives and I know other people have gone for a week cruise and spent more than $3,000. So people were just looking at me and they didn't think it was possible. Well, I did a little bit more than I thought I was. I did 13,542 miles in 29 days and even thought I did um, 3,500 more miles. Well, basically, when you look at it, 13,000 miles, the equivalent of driving halfway around the world at the equator, I did it all for less than $2,600. I was able to do it for 89, less than $89 a day. Did I enjoy it? Yep, I loved it. And um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you about a seven-minute clip of a number of um, photos that I took around the country. And I apologize for the music background music. I didn't want to go and give you seven um, minutes of different slides with no background music. So when we come back, we'll talk about some of the things that I observed and learned along the way.
hope you enjoyed some of those um, photographs. I really did. It was just, um, it just gave you an awesome feeling just to see the, the beauty of the United States. We have so much to offer, so much to enjoy as you go around the country. Yep. We need to get off our butts. We need to stop playing um, PlayStation or Wii. We need to get in our cars and we need to enjoy the beauty, like I said, of the United States. Yes, it isn't Disney World, it isn't <clears throat> Six Flags, but I think that once you get out there, you'll enjoy it. <clears throat> and the other thing is, one of the things, one of the goals I had was try to get a little bit healthier. Prior to going out, I had got my cholesterol. My cholesterol was up a little bit. My blood pressure was up a little bit. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try to no meat, no junk food, no dessert, no sugar, no diet soda. I figured, let me try it, see if I had the willpower to do it for 29 days. Well, believe it or not, it was pretty easy. Uh, my fruit and vegetables, I had some multi-grain bread. Uh, plenty of water, had some yogurt, and um, stopped along the stores, some at farmer's market, some at some big stores, and got fresh fruit and fresh vegetables. It just changed. It was easier than I thought it was. And you know what? You get to lose a, a lot of weight, and you come back feeling really healthy, really refreshed. I didn't realize how bad processed food and junk food and how, me and how negatively it affected my system. <clears throat> there was people going, there was plenty of ways, <clears throat> excuse me, to save money along the way. You would go, you could, mostly all our national parks have campgrounds. In a lot of places, five bucks. And then a bunch of them like for um, Grand Teton National Park, five dollars for a campground, 350 to take a shower. They had a laundromat, buck 75 to wash your clothes, buck 75 to um, dry your clothes. So when you sit there and look at it, bingo, 10 bucks, less than 10 bucks. I had a place to sleep, washed my clothes, dried my clothes, and was ready to move on the next day to Yellowstone National Park. <clears throat> the other ways, um, I took three five gallon gas cans. And for example, I went one place, gas was $3.34. So I filled it up. I learned never go to a national park um, on less than a full tank of gas. Excuse me. As you see, I put, you probably saw in one of the slides, Death Valley, gas was almost five fifty a gallon. So when I was running out of gas in Death Valley, you just pull over, put five gallons in the can, Basically, that was the equivalent of saving um, 10 bucks. It was just an idea of being smart with your money. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the point about um, sleeping in my car, you know what? At first, I thought it might be, I may be one of the few. I can't tell you how many people I saw sleeping in their cars. And these were people who had pretty good expensive cars, new cars. I remember on the New York um, Thruway, I had spent the night in, in, a rest, in a rest area. I saw a woman in an expensive car. She was sleeping. And then in the morning when I got up to go to the bathroom and I came back, I could see that she had been a businesswoman. She was going through her papers. And years ago, you wouldn't see women on the, the highways. Again, she was just making a conscious decision. Do I spend 80 to $100 to spend the night, or do I do this? The, another thing that I saw on the, uh, my trip around the country that kind of really amazed me, the number of women that were on the highways. 30 years ago, women very rarely traveled, or if they traveled, they traveled with their husband. There were women, middle-aged women, young women, grandparents, you, they were young, traveling with young girls. They were traveling, and uh, when I came back, I talked to <clears throat> a few people, and I kind of jokingly, but it kind of made it serious, really, in the last 50 years, three of the things that have really liberated women was they were able to get a job, and they had control over their financial destiny, and they didn't have to stay in um, a bad marriage. 
Second, birth control. They had the ability to determine when they were going to have children. And third, believe it or not, I think the GPS. Now the fact that you could have a GPS, plug a thing in, and drive 2,000, 2,500 miles in it with a sense of ease, it just kind of amazed me. Like I said, it, maybe I was being sexist or just being brought up, that women now have the freedom, as men had a long time, for a long time, to get in their car and travel around the country to, per, to enjoy themselves, again to see the beauty, and again to have the freedom that men had. <clears throat> the... There was once in, in the Keene Sentinel, there was an article that they talked about me going to um, visit lighthouses. I haven't read the article yet. I probably will get around to it. But it's kind of like the TV, this TV show and some of the other ones. I just feel really uncomfortable about reading about myself or um, watching these shows. I think, that, I think this is pretty close to the 50th show, and I maybe have spent... 20, 25 minutes watching all these total shows. But because we were talking about lighthouses and the article was about lighthouses, I was able to visit 67 lighthouses. It wasn't the number that I wanted to um, visit, but 19 of the 29 days that I traveled, there was um, quite a bit of rain, some violent thunderstorms, some, some hail while the people back east were having 100 degree temperatures. We had some low temperatures and like I said, violent um, thunderstorms. Out on the, um, the Pacific Northwest, up in <clears throat> upper uh, Northern California, Oregon and Washington, you had a lot of fog, you had a lot of rain. And since a lot of lighthouses were on the coast or just on the, or off the coast, you just couldn't see them. So I altered um, my trip. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to run a clip of um, the 67 lighthouses that um, I visited. And <clears throat> I'm doing this for, the, I guess, the connoisseurs uh, of lighthouses. Been back, since I've been back, there's been about 10 or 11 people that talked to me about the lighthouses. And I didn't realize how many um, people truly enjoyed um, lighthouses. Matter of fact, when I came back, um, I had a postcard from a lady in Keene who sent me, we had a lighthouse on the front who said, I hope you enjoy your trip. I don't know if she's watching, but I'll say thank you. So let's roll the clip on, on the lighthouses and we'll be right back.
Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the, um, the clips of um, the lighthouses. And some of them were in the um, Pacific um, Northwest. I, I think I had about eight in um, Oregon, three in Northern California, um, three or four in Washington. Most of them, other ones were on the, um, the Great Lakes, up in Northern Michigan, um, Lake Superior. I think I got about eight in Minnesota. And I was able to get a number of the, the classic lighthouses that have, you'll see in calendars and books and stuff. And believe it or not, I was driving through Montana, going down the old Lewis and Clark Highway, and there on the clear on the blue, I was going past the lake, and there it was. There was a lighthouse in Montana on the lake. I would have never expected to see a lighthouse in the middle of Montana, far away from the ocean. But around the United States, there's probably about 10 or 11 lighthouses that are actually on lakes or um, on the rivers. <clears throat> so again, if you enjoy the lighthouses, you should be able to go out there, you should be able to go and enjoy them. But what I found um, amazing is once you really got out of the big cities, you got off the coast, you actually saw real America. You didn't see Fox News. You didn't see MSNBC or, or CNN. These were men and women who were real Americans doing their best every single day to survive. In Montana, there was one group, one, one individual, they were talking about, oh, you're just a farmer because you enjoy being a farmer. He says, no, I did not enjoy being a farmer. I was a farmer because my father was a farmer and my grandparent was a farmer and I inherited the farm. I have to take care of my family. This is how I take care of my family. What I do is what I have to do to take care of my family. If it means working seven days a week, day and night to take care of my family, I will do what I have to do. And that's the part that I found really amazing. Washington, Oregon, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, we did not see, I did not see Americans complaining about how bad the world is or how unfair it is. People were working together as you went through small town after small town. It was kind of like that <clears throat> old song. There was a statue to an unknown soldier in almost every single town. There was a memorial to the town's veterans and people that, soldiers that got killed in, in a war. It, and you had flags going, Fourth of July was really important to them. They had community in involvement. The baseball, other sports were important to them. And town after town, Michigan, all the way out to the West Coast. If, their team, if they had a team that had won their state champion, when you w drove into that town, there was a sign saying, we were champions. It's important to them. I remember the oldest was one town. It says, we, our town, our basketball team, won the state championship in 1950-1951. Excuse <coughs> me. Other towns, we won the championship in 1970, 1980, 1990. It was important. It was community involvement. It's not like now if Keen High wins the champion. Yes, you'll have a few people out there. You'll have the parents and you'll have other athletes. It just isn't Keen High winning a championship, Keen High winning the state baseball championship, or the golf team. It isn't kind of like a, a community doesn't get excited over it. And I think we, we're missing something. We are really missing something. And politicians, Democrats, Republicans, political leaders, and that's a word that I use very loosely when I say political leaders. They're elected leaders, but I really have to question, are they real leaders? 
as I went from town to town, these individuals, these people are paying more for their food, they're paying more for their gas, they're living in small homes, old homes. When you give the example of the size, some of them are kind of like if you go down Baker Street, around Avalon Place, those Congress Street, those old kind of um, GI Bill type houses, you're talking 900 to maybe 1,200 square feet. The people are doing what they need to survive. In some, in some cases, the only thing they have in town is a little small IGA or a Rex Hall drug, st <clears throat> drug store. Things that don't survive on the coast anymore. Things that local businesses that have been wiped out by the big box stores. But then on the other hand, without some of the big box stores in some of these communities, I don't know how these people would able to have really any standard of living that we would expect <clears throat> of Americans. These people weren't worried about the debt limit because they're not going out. They don't have the money to buy a brand new house, so they don't care. It doesn't affect them if the mortgage interest rate goes up on the mortgages. They're not going out and buying new cars. I saw an Eagle Valiant. Eagle hasn't made a car in how long? It doesn't exist. I saw a Toyota Cassell. Toyota hasn't made that vehicle in a long time. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> the people had old cars, 15, 20 years old. I thought my old car with over 135,000 miles, over 12 years old, was old. It's old here, but it's a new car for a lot of people out there. I saw old pickups, Chevy and Ford pickups, 15, 20 years old, rust patch. These people are doing what they need to do to survive. And the funny part, maybe the most realistic part, they are some of the happiest people I've seen. They're courteous, maybe because I got some gray hair, they would go and say, yes, sir, no, sir, how you doing today, sir? Well. Maybe I need to dye my hair so, you know, when they say sir and you're not in the military, you kind of feel old. <clears throat> but it was really enjoyable to sit there and talk to the people. They talked. They came up to you. They looked you in the eye. They would shake your hands. They would ask you having a good day. And, you know what, you kind of miss it. In Keene, some people do it, but the idea is to be able to walk down the street, go to a total stranger, and they say, hello. I hope you have a good day. <clears throat> it just, again, makes you um, feel important. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> and when you sit there and you look at it, I think it's getting worse. The economy isn't growing, and what's going to happen after looking is, the people in the Midwest, in the Pacific Northwest, the people who are on the old U.S. highway systems, they are so different. Their kids don't have a $150 a month cell phone bill. Their kids are not texting and over and over again. <clears throat> Their kids don't have expensive clothes. The people out there have really understood what they need to do to live a comfortable life over what they want to have. I've seen places where an individual may have 640 acres and he may have 30, 40 head of cattle on it. But then again, he may be living in an, one of those old silver aluminum um, jet wind, windstream um, camper. And you would go, what? So you would see a big telephone, one a telephone line, an electric line running into it. You would see a propane tank out of it. And what would happen is you may see a four-wheeler, you may see a boat. And Friday, which I call the Fred Flintstone um, syndrome, they're out of work Friday and they're on their way. They hook up their boat, they hook up their four-wheeler and they're off to the National Forest or the National Recreation, they go out and spend the whole weekend 
enjoying themselves. A few get drunk, but basically no. They have a few beers, they go fishing, they go hunting, they go hiking. They go out and enjoy themselves. It's like, yes, I'll work for you Monday through Friday, but Saturday and Sunday is my time. And don't call me, don't do anything, because that's my time and I've, I've earned it. <clears throat> the, um, what I really found um, strange going to the national parks, I've taken a, a trip around the country in 2005, about 12,000 miles. I did about eight, 9,000 in 2007. <clears throat> and I can't tell you, <coughs> excuse me, how empty the national parks were. Yellowstone, you could walk through. There was no waiting lines. I took a picture of Yellowstone on a Saturday morning, and there was only three cars in the parking lot. The last couple of times I went there, you had to wait just to get a parking spot. I went to Bryce Canyon, and before it was pretty tough to get your car in there. You had to park outside of Bryce Canyon and go on the bus. But the park, Yosemite, was empty <clears throat> in relationship to what it normally does. It was just amazing how few Americans were visiting the national parks. Um, I saw other Americans that were there. I saw a BMW, I came back and I told a BMW drove to a picnic area, and when they got to the picnic area, they, took, they went to the trunk of their car and they took a bag from one of the big box stores, and they had yogurt, and they had special K's, and that's what they were eating for lunch. Again, they didn't sleep. They went to the campground, pitched a pop-up tent, but they didn't really kind of rough it because some of these pop-up tents now have air, condition, air conditioners. Times have changed, but you had expensive cars paying five, ten bucks at a national park campground enjoying it. These people have decided, I still want to go. How can I find a way to go? They did. $10 for a campground, vice $80, $90 for a hotel. A couple of bucks for a yogurt and Special K, vice going to a restaurant paying $50, $60 for a meal. Some of the people were just, and they were just in, enjoying themselves. But the part that really amazed me was the number of Europeans and the number of Japanese and um, Chinese and Australians <clears throat> and new people from New Zealand that were in the national parks. In California, mostly all the rental cars stopped, their license plate stops with six. And I can't tell you how many, but I can tell you that the majority of the cars in the national parks, all the way from the Grand Canyon all the way up into the Canadian Rockies, started with six and what they would do is some of them they would come into the United States and they would drive up one side of um, the Rocky Mountains visiting um, the volcanoes, visiting Yosemite, the Redwoods, Olympia, Crater Lake, Mount Rainier and then all the way up through um, the Glacier and Banff and the um, Columbia Ice Fields up in Jasper, and then back down through the United States Glacier, um, <clears throat> Wyoming, and through the, the Col Colorados, the Colorado Plateau, and all those national parks. And again, they were, um, they were friendly. They had no problem coming up and, and talking. They said, hey, can I take your picture? Will you take my picture? And they, again, were just um, enjoying themselves. The Chinese, the Japanese, they were taking advantage of um, the United States dollar. They were just coming in and enjoying themselves. One of the negative parts, maybe um, <clears throat> being a little rough or being highly critical, I saw a number of <clears throat> very sick elderly um, people in the national parks, some were on oxygen, some couldn't walk, some were really frail. And the, you, you're looking at them and I'm saying some of the individuals may not be around in the next six to 12 months. And I found that really sad because people work their whole life 
and now they're getting to the end of their life and they're getting the opportunity to enjoy some of the beauty of the United States. Well, you know, to me, you need to take the opportunity now. If you need to take the opportunity with your children or with your grandchildren. The, um, <clears throat> I'm getting older, I got another birthday tomorrow and I'm getting closer and closer to that Social Security Day but I've gone, I've come back, I get to share a bunch of stuff <clears throat> that I've learned with you. I get to sit down and talk to my children, talk to my grandkids and say, you know what, this is what you can, can see. This is what uh, America um, has to offer. And I've instilled it with my, two, my daughters to get out and travel. I'm instilling it with my grandchildren to get out and, and travel. You cannot, I cannot tell you anything negative about going out, traveling <clears throat> across America, meeting <clears throat> real Americans, not the Americans like Kim Kardashian or the Housewives of New Jersey or Orange County or any of those, but going out and meeting real Americans, real hard-working Americans, not the ones you go on Fox or MSNBC and say they're bigoted against the President of the United States because he's a black man. No, I did not run into one bigoted person that I know of. Yes, they may be questioning the President of the United States for his leadership abilities, but they were not questioning him because he was a black man. They were questioning mostly all the politicians around the country for their lack of leadership. And so as we get ready to wrap this up, and before I show you some of the parts in, in Canada, I kind of recap. The lowest place I was was at Death Valley, 288 feet below sea level. The highest place I was was Rocky Mountain National Park, 12,408 feet above sea level. Pretty tough to walk. But it was enjoyable standing up there almost kind of like um, the sound of music looking at the Alps. I went to the Great Sand Dunes National Park, foolishly climbed a 650-foot sand dune, and we'll show you that on some video coming up in the latest show. I went to Olympia National Forest, the rainforest. I went to Crater Lake and La Civerin, um National Park and looked down into... Um, volcanoes. I went up to Jasper and walked on a glacier. And then in one of the other parks, I can't remember right off the bat, I looked down into a crater, a meteor crater that impacted about 600,000 600, years ago. It was just awesome. And to be able to go and say that I went through all those places, rainforests, <clears throat> glaciers, below sea level, mountains, <clears throat> sat on the Pacific coast, watched the Great Lakes in a thousand foot carrier, the press aisle going through the locks, looking at the source of the Mississippi. That is all in America. You need to get out there, you need to do it, and I can guarantee you will really enjoy yourself. Of course, if I ever have to do this again, I'm gonna smarten up and I'm going to bring a little camper, camper with me because sleeping in your car, sleeping on the ground is not always the smartest thing to do, especially when you're in some of these parks and there's grizzly bears, brown bears, mountain lions. In some cases, it's a really dumb thing to do. So I've learned I'm not 25 years old anymore. I'm not a Marine captain. I'm not invincible. And it's time for me to smarten up. And so my next trip, I will do it in much smarter. And so thank you, and I hope you enjoy the um, pictures of, of Canada. And like I said, I've got a whole bunch of video that we're putting together, and we'll show you a video in one of the upcoming shows. And thank you, and I guess it's really good to be back. So I'm not on the long road today, but thank you for watching, and hope to see you soon.